happens. Or I guess last year wasn't. That was L.A. So I guess you just so yeah, didn't. You were there. The first year was Miami, and I think we we caught you on your morning walk. No, the, so the first year was Tampa, I want to say. Tampa. If it was, yeah, if it was Super Bowl 55, that would have been Tampa during the pandemic. Yep. And you did. You caught me on like their, I don't know if it's a city walk or whatever it is. But yeah, I was like, ah, I got to get my, do my old man walk. And yeah. yeah, let's, let's knock it out. So this will hopefully be, although you caught me on a Wednesday. Wednesday is Gardner Day. So oh. you might hear some, some weed whacking going on during this whole thing. That's uh, the one time we don't have a manscaped read. Um, I think, okay. uh, I think Wednesday's Ploof's Gardener Day. Yeah, do you you and Ploof? Yes. Wow. How about that? It's big around uh around you know we we live about ten miles away from one another, but there Gardener Wednesday is big, and then Trash Thursday mm. is big too. So, um, it's usually not the garbage trucks that make the sounds when you'll when you're listening to baseball today when we're doing it. It's usually the dog barking mm. at the garbage trucks that make the sound. Well, hopefully we'll be lucky enough to get a little bit of that today. Um, Chris Rose, Super Bowl 57? Is that right? Yes, wow. it is. Wow. Yeah, L-V-I-I. We'll start by ranking your top favorite 50 Super Bowls, and then we'll get into this one. Okay. Um, so number Good. 50. Oh, God. Oh, we're going from <laughs> backwards to the best. I mean, okay. no, Don't no, laugh no. at him. No, I don't won't. laugh at him because I we really was about to do this. Don't cut. Yeah, the Chris, you'd actually love doing that. So we're not doing that now. We will talk. Uh, the Chiefs are back. Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid. Uh, not too much of a shocker there when you talk about them before the season or or what they're involved in. I mean, the only shock was Mahomes. Not was, true. Was, okay. Not true. What was the preseason narrative this year in the AFC West? Well, that it was going to be the toughest division, and mm -hmm. I was I was about to spin it back to the Bills too, who were you know that they played the Chiefs previously and Josh Allen, and you know they had that shootout game last year. I, I guess nothing is promised in the NFL. I, I just meant the spirit of if I told you before the season Patrick Mahomes was going back to the Super Bowl, I, I don't think you would have gasped at me. Not gasped, but there were a lot of people who did not have them winning the division. It's let true. alone winning the AFC, right? They traded Tyreek uh, for picks. They watched Devontae Adams go and pair with his college buddy, Derek Carr, in Vegas with an innovative, uh, brilliant second-time head coach in Josh McDaniels. <laughs> we all thought the Chargers were going to be better with a high-powered offense uh, under third-year quarterback. Uh, and then, of course, Russ going to Denver. And so everybody was going, oh, man, yeah. I don't know how they're going to win that division. Well, not only did they win it, they smoked everybody else in that division. They won it with a month to go. And I think what it has just shown you is how exceptionally talented Patrick Mahomes is, right? Look at his receiving core. And it hasn't even been all that healthy this year. But when Marquez Valdez hyphen Scantling is the only veteran you can rely on basically for three quarters against the Cincinnati Bengals, and you still end up beating a damn good team, that's impressive on one ankle, by the way. Right, right. Uh, a bad, a bad ankle sprain. And I, I think the other, the other thing I want to key in there. You mentioned special Patrick Mahomes. Andy Reid deserves the the assist on that too. And obviously mm -hmm. Kelsey and uh, you know any of the other Kansas City stars. You know Chris Jones and that. But uh, I think the Reid Mahomes pairing has been one of the more beautiful things football has seen in recent years with the offensive guru and. Uh, kind of the freak that is Mahomes when he busts out that one or two runs a game that you're like, wait, he can do that? He kind of runs like mm -hmm. a tight end himself a little bit. Like when he's in the open field, there's a speed power combo to him that's <laughs> it's just awesome. We're we're too used to it at I this think point. It's, yeah, I think it's the most underappreciated part of his game, which is why I think this Sunday is going to be a real challenge for him, right? He's going against a team – that had 15 more sacks than any other team. Oddly enough, the Kansas City Chiefs finished second with 55 sacks. If they get five more, they're going to set the all-time single-season record, including the playoffs. Now, I know we played more games than the 84 Bears did, but sure. still, it means something. And the fact that Philadelphia could do a lot 
like they did five years ago when they won it all, where they can rotate seven or eight different pass rushers, keep guys fresh, particularly some veterans along that line. And then Dominican Sue and Fletcher Cox and Hargrave and, you know, guys like that, that they don't have to play every play, particularly Sue and Cox at this point in their careers. Um, but they can make game splashing, game changing plays will be very, very interesting. But, uh, you know, I, just, I, I do like this matchup an awful lot. I think it's going to go down to the last three or four minutes here. Well, and that's where I was I was flashing back to Tampa because I remember, A, I mean, you know, still I don't want to say nervous, but, you know, a young, young little old me talking to Chris Rose about the Super Bowl, and I was like, Mahomes and Brady, how beautiful is this? And, like, is Tampa's only chance if Tom Brady is Tom Brady? And you're like, well, not really because I think they're – they're better on the D line, um, and the Eagles, who we haven't fully circled up to, they started this season as kind of the sexy team a little bit. Everyone was like, mm-hmm. "That division looks weak," and and Hertz took a step, and talent they have it all over the field. It happened full tilt. They were rolling. They kind of, I don't want to say limped into the playoffs, but they weren't as sexy. And then they kind of flipped the switch, which you always wonder in sports if that's there, but. They had kind of done a lot of their work. And, Rosie, you already started there, but the D-line and their O-line, man, like, it, mm-hmm. is that what we're going to be talking about on Monday? Because, God, they're they're so dominant. And it leads into dominance in their running and their passing and other aspects of their defense. So, BBD, I don't know if you have the ability to pull up tweets on this show. Do you? Mm. Mm, not in the graphics super, super easily. <laughs> Okay, well, why don't you just pull up my? Uh, I have a pinned okay. tweet there. Wait. Chris Rose, why don't you, why don't you read it? Take me a quick. Why don't you read it for the class at Chris Rose, real quickly? Yeah, and this is from I believe September eighth. So <clears throat> exact? Mm-hmm. Would this be exactly Sep- six months ago today? September eighth. That what it was seven forty eight p.m. I believe that's Eastern time where I am right now. It is. Uh, yes, it's right before kickoff. First of, kickoff of I the first that. game of the year. Yes, last, so last here we go. Year, Read it, please. Last year, I, Chris Rose, picked the, the Bills to make the Super Bowl. I'm going to do it again. However, they will lose in Arizona too. dot, 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 dot. The Eagles. Mm. Maybe I just want to hear Jason Kelsey's second Super Bowl speech. Enjoy the season. See you Sunday on game day highlights and game day final. Okay. Oh. So there you go. So do I get half credit for that or what? I mean, you can get three quarters credit, I believe, because if the Eagles win, mm. that's what's important that you got the Super Bowl yes. winner. So mm-hmm. who they play, yep. um, it matters a little less. So okay, I didn't realize that there was some some ploof World Series situation going on here. Not quite. No, not no, no. Quite. We're not going to go that far. That was that was incredible. But here's the so here's the reason I saw it that way. As you well know, uh, I I call play by play for the Cleveland Browns yes. in the in the preseason, right? The Browns. Uh, not drawn to scale on this helmet. And um we did a joint practice a couple days with the Philadelphia Eagles. And at that point I thought the Browns, we knew that Deshaun Watson was going to be missing some time. At that point it was six games. We didn't know it was going to be eleven. But the defense, which had played very well the last three quarters of the 2021 season was coming back pretty much intact. And I thought, boy, okay, the defense can carry him. They're going to be really good. And then I watched the Eagles take it to the Browns on both sides of the football. Now, granted, it was just two joint practices, but I looked at their physicality and the amount of talent they had on both sides of the line. So it meant that even if they had some injuries, that they had a tremendous amount of depth, which most teams do not have on those parts of their team. And I said, you know what? I think they're going to win the NFC East. I said, you know what? I think they're going to get enough wins to maybe be that one seed. And if they get that one seed, I think they can win two games and end up in Glendale. And sure enough, this is exactly what happened. And it's exactly kind of the way it's played out. Now, I will say this. I think that Jalen Hurts has turned into a much better passer than I than I ever anticipated. Did he struggle at the end of the year? Yes. I think we're going to find out once this game is over just how much that shoulder is bothering him. Right. I think it's been a real issue for him. Uh, he's coming off his worst statistical game of the year in the NFC Championship where he only threw for 121 yards. 
but he hasn't needed to be great in part because they faced a Giants team that just can't match up offensively with the Eagles. And they faced a team that couldn't have a forward pass thrown in the second half. So this is going to be a challenge for them. Um, but I just love everything about the Eagles. I don't think they have a weakness on this team. Yeah, I mean, uh, when you go through the weakness, the weakness was kind of supposed to be hurt, and now he's this dual threat, like power and speed running. I, I mean, you know, mm-hmm. I, I think if you're a football fan, you've heard the about the 600-pound squats, a.k.a. the Chris Rose. Um, you, you've seen... Can't. No, can't no? do the squats after that second uh, microdiscectomy. Just uh, I'm out on the. I don't want that false information okay. out there. Um, just not. I don't even know if I could do six pound squats at this point. <laughs> we'll find out uh, the next time we see you. Uh, big old bear hug, and I'm just gonna lift my legs up, and we'll see what happens. By the way, that's very soon. Very. Yeah, soon. that is very soon. I'm excited for that. Um, big, Are we allowed to talk about that or no? We do, people know I'm getting married. It's it's out there. Okay. Getting getting buried. No. You can't you can't make those jokes with Chris. Chris Chris Rose, if I had to do a top top 5 of maybe hap, hap, most happily married people I know, you might be on that list, Chris Rose. It's true. Now I don't know if Michelle is. Right. But I am. No, she she's uh, for Probably not. For however many years running, not on the list, but uh, you are. So we're happy for your happiness. Um, Thank you. Yeah, 25 and a half if you're keeping track. Wow. Wow. It's a big one. Yeah. Um, Kelsey Bowl. What? Uh huh. So you're, I don't want to say you're riding with the Eagles, but you kind of have all year in a way. We just went through that old mm-hmm. tweet. Uh, their, their formula seems. I guess fairly simple. If we're talking, if we're greasing poles, um, we expect it to be the same way, right? Like, it's going to be kind of dominant. Like, they dominate on the lines, which allows them to run the ball. It sets up their passing. And when none of that's there, it seems like Jalen Hurts scrambles for that seven yards in the first down. And it's just like, damn, we don't know what to do anymore. Um, The guys on the outside uh, between AJ uh, and Devontae, I, it, it's everywhere with them is I, I laid it out there like this last time and you shut it down a little bit. So I'm kind of hoping for that. If it's the chiefs, is it just, it's Mahomes magic and it's beautiful. And he's, we start comparing him to Brady even more. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot to unpack there. Let's start with just the game itself. Okay. Um, I do think they're going to have to run the ball to be successful. A little bit. I, I know that with the exception of Michael Hardman, who got put on injured reserve, yeah. uh, that it sounds like Juju's going to be out there uh, and it sounds like Kadarius Tony will be out there. We don't know how healthy those two will be, but they're going to need them at some point. Regardless of whether Kelsey has the help on the outside or doesn't, they're still going to get him the ball. A few guys have... I've rarely seen guys be able to get open when you know the ball's going to (laughs) them anyway. And he still is like uncovered by three or four yards. (laughs) It's ridiculous. So um, he is, he is special. And what he and Mahomes have built together over these five years in which uh, Mahomes has been a starter has been sensational, but they have to run the ball effectively. They have to do it. And you can run a little bit against Philly. You know, they're number one against the pass in part because of that pressure they get on them. But the secondary is pretty good as well. Um, So I think that's part of the game plan here for for Kansas City. As far as talking big picture, if, and it's a big little word here, IF, if the Chiefs end up winning this thing, I come from the school of you don't have to wait before you start throwing bouquets at certain people. Uh, I have had the good fortune of watching the NFL very closely for nearly five decades. So I feel like I have seen all the – I saw Montana from beginning to end. Uh, I saw Aikman from beginning to end. I saw all of Steve Young's career. I saw all of Dan Marino's career. John Elway, uh, you know, moving into Peyton Manning and then Tom Brady and all of that sort of stuff. So if we're strictly doing it numbers-wise, I think you're doing your eyes a disservice to what you think greatness is. Because I can tell you, I don't think I've ever seen somebody with the skill set of Patrick Mahomes um, 
his ability to keep plays alive, to use his brain. I mean, how many times a game does he make a throw where you're like, what the fuck was he thinking? Yeah, Not very often, right? You seem to get that with a lot of other quarterbacks. Like Josh Allen is a perfect example. There is a high, high reward every time Josh Allen throws the ball. There's also a very high risk every time he throws the ball. With Mahomes, you equal, if not better, the reward, but the risk run is so low, so low for the most part. And that's, I mean, that's the top of the line when you're talking about quarterbacks, right? When Brett Favre was playing, mm-hmm. once again, very similar to Josh Allen, high risk, but he'd throw the other team five or six passes that they could pick off a game. So there was always always that high risk there and, and high reward to come along with it. I really think that he's going to win the MVP tomorrow and that if he mm-hmm. ends up winning a second Super Bowl all by the age of 27, it is not too early to say that he's in the top five all-time of quarterbacks, in my opinion. It's a compelling argument, right? If it looks like it looks, uh, and you know we had some sports history last night with LeBron passing, and uh, everyone wants to right. do their their that thing because you know LeBron, it's it's passed the eye test the whole way. <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't think we needed him to get to this point to be like, wow, LeBron's good. Uh, this is Kansas City's uh, what is it? Three Super Bowls in four years. Um, yes. mm-hmm. with this guy. And I, I think one of the things I, I began to appreciate more uh, as the Brady retirement was looming was when everyone started doing like, you know, I, I think Rodgers, Rodgers has only been to one Super Bowl. Um, mm-hmm. Drew Brees was at two or only went to one. Um, uh, they won, they won Super Bowl 44. And that was it. And that was, and it's just one of those things like, you know, those guys are so good. Um, those guys are so good that you need the team, you need the coaching, but it feels like if you're that next tier, Tom, and it looks like Patrick's on a clear trajectory and trajectory even. Trajectory is when you put the paper on the sheet and then it, it goes on the wall. Yeah, and then the little. I don't know if BBD even saw yeah, those that in school. Did you guys see projectors? Uh, no like the like with the one they wheel with out the light there, bulb. The light, yeah, yeah, it yeah, shines up and out. Yeah, yeah, That's... they graduated off those by the time I got to middle school, but we Just had them in my smart elementary boards. school. No, 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 yeah. yeah, those are done. Those yeah. were, uh, man, uh, Kansas City, three Super Bowls in four years. A lot of that was Mahomes. Reed gets the assist. Um, no, he's 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 incredible, and like you said, the risk factor is so funny. He also has that one. He has the one or two a game. I, I remember, uh, I want to say two years ago, it was against the Broncos, and, and they were all excited, and he completed a third down, I think, with his left hand, and it was just like, okay. Yeah. So uh, you know he's going to have a couple moments of pure brilliance that nobody can tap into, um, and you just wonder when those moments are going to hit, and are those deflating for Philadelphia? H- have you done everything right, and somehow uh, his his magic powers are are too much? Who's um, who's the star? Because Hurts and Mahomes, obviously, they've been circled. The youngest quarterback duo, right, in a Super Bowl history, combined mm-hmm. age. Mm-hmm. Um, two African, that is correct. Two African-American quarterbacks, uh, and we always mm-hmm. zoom in on the quarterback. They're obviously going to get so much attention, and, and like we said, the trenches, and there's so many other things. I, I guess uh, skill set, skill position-wise. Who are you most excited to see? Is it is it AJ Brown in a big game? Uh, I I mean Kelsey already you know he's already in the conversation for best tight end ever. So I mean even if he throws up a a five for forty five, no one's going to be like oh Travis Kelsey. Um, I I guess no. Pacheco. Uh, I I know he's a guy that you mentioned. If they're going to run the ball, he's the guy that might get the lion's share. I guess of the skill guys on both teams, who who's jumping off the board to you the most? I think the best wide receiver slash tight end combo in the NFL is Philadelphia. Uh, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard. I think that is a uh, phenomenal triumvirate. I think it's excellent. Um, A.J. Brown has not had 30 yards receiving in either playoff game yet. So they have dusted the Giants and the Niners, and A.J. Brown has basically been a spectator. So I expect him to test this really young secondary. 
And I thought the secondary actually did a pretty good job against Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd and that well, group. They probably have an um, argument they got, for, for best wide receiver, wide receiver group at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. You can certainly make that argument. Um, but I love what A.J. Brown has brought to, to Philadelphia. You usually don't think of wide receivers – changing the mentality of a group but i think that aj brown has he is tough as shit he is physical he will run right through you and run past you um i think he's going to have an opportunity to have a really really big day sunday now the kansas city secondary they did give up some big plays against the Bengals, but you have to remember how young that part of their team is as they have now continued to pay um some offensive linemen and obviously mahomes and obviously uh, Kelsey and stuff like that. Um, they've had to chop in other areas, right? They traded Tyreek Hill. They've had to draft in their secondary. They drafted Trent McDuffie. They drafted Brian Cook out of Cincinnati. Uh, they drafted uh, Jalen Watson in the seventh round. So Pacheco isn't the only seventh rounder. Uh, this kid Williams, I think, was a fifth rounder. George Karloftis on their defensive line. Mm. You're talking about five contributors on defense that are all rookies. And I think that story, nobody knows about that story. That is big time. That's what Steve Spagnolo has been able to do um, defensively. But with that being said, I just, I feel like A.J. Brown, this is going to be his chance to shine. He's kind of waited in the weeds. You haven't heard much from him. I think he's ready to explode Sunday. Do you spin the rookie thing in a positive or negative light with the fact that, you know, this is now going to be game... 17-game regular season, two playoff games. This will be their 20th game. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's not like it's a rookie in their fourth game. Like, a lot of these guys now have some experience that, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, like in <laughs> in a matter of a weekend, they're going to be second-year players, <laughs> you know? So, I, I don't know. Right. Is there is there a positive spin zone there for Chiefs fans? Or is it you, you got rookies in the secondary that's scary? Well, it's only from the standpoint of it now being the biggest game on the planet, right? Yeah. Um, that's But that could be true for guys who are, you know, Carlos Dunlop on the defensive line for them has been around 13 years or whatever, right. and he's making his Super Bowl debut. So the first, I, I don't know how you react differently as a guy in his early 30s as opposed to a guy who might be 21 and playing in the Super Bowl. You, that's stuff we'd have to ask them. Uh, and guys that have been through it. So I suppose that's all it is. Um, you do hear from so many guys that once the game starts, you just kind of settle in and you realize it's a football game. It's no longer the Super Bowl. Right. It is the Super Bowl to us, but it's the Super Bowl. And maybe when it starts and maybe if it's real crunch time and the game's tied at 23 with four minutes to go, that maybe people realize the <laughs> how much is on the line. The oh shit. Um, yeah, Chris Rose, this preview has been brought to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 57. You, if you're a new customer, you can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. If you have no idea with the Super Bowl, you can basically bet on anything. Um, and they have some happy hour boosts going for the games. Why don't you download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code BAKERS. New customers can bet $5 on Super Bowl 57 and get 200 in bonus bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code BAKERS. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Um, Chris Rose, I think I got one more good, bad question for you. Um, yes, sir. I, I guess around a lot of sporting events, you'll hear... And, and I, I've asked you this because, you know, you work with, a, a, I mean, the NFL network, it's, it's stacked with people. Um, and I, I love when sporting events, even spring training sometimes, bringing it back to baseball, there's a gossip around the team or there's this line. If this player breaks out, this is going to happen. I, I guess is there anything that maybe you've heard from multiple people that feels like the consensus, and maybe it could be as like, the Eagles' lines are too good. They're going to dominate this game. Or is there a, is there something that you've heard, or maybe you feel personally that that is kind of the elevator pitch that you're hearing around this Super Bowl? Well, if you remember the last time the Chiefs were in it, uh, Mahomes had to spin back the odometer. It seemed like every snap 
he would get it run 27 yards backward and then try and make a miraculous play, right? Yeah. Every snap that was happening. Like they tallied up the number of yards he actually ran throughout the game, and it was like a billion or something. Um, and so what did the Chiefs do in the offseason? They spent money in free agency. They made a tra- uh, trade for Orlando Brown. They drafted a couple guys on their offensive line, and now there's only one starter in Andrew Wiley who was in that Super Bowl 55 loss to the Bucks. So now that um, they've spent money, draft capital, on improving this line, going against the best defensive line, um, you know, in the sport collectively. I mean, I'm watching that. I want to know if they can keep those monsters off of Mahomes. And particularly when, you know, at some point he's going to do something in the game where he tweaks his ankle. He had it pop up a couple of times against Cincinnati where he's rolling one direction, you know, he's trying to plant and something weird happens. It's going to happen. But, can they keep him upright enough to the point where he can be Patrick Mahomes? And to me, it's just that simple there. It is it is that simple. I suppose if there's one other thing that we haven't really talked about, it's the run game of Philadelphia, which has been exceptional. Yeah. We saw them run all over the number one ranked defense in San Francisco. I just think they eventually got tired and worn out at the end of that Eagles game. But they ran for four touchdowns. You know, they're unbeaten when Miles Sanders runs for a score, if you're into that sort of stuff. They're 9-0. Mm-hmm. and Jalen Hurts has 15 rushing touchdowns, most ever for a quarterback in a season. So, a lot of ways they could beat you. And by the way, don't we think that Nick Sirianni, it looks like he won a contest, fan contest in Philly and got to come out of the stands and coach them. He's, he's the perfect fit. Trev was so mad at us for a while because we said Gabe Kapler wasn't a fit in Philly. Because Gabe's kind of like too roped up and a little too well put together. Sirianni is yeah. perfect. Like he's got a little touch of the perfect. facial hair, but it's it's not too hot. It's not like peak Bradley Cooper hot. It's uh, I mean it's everything they could want. Um, and yeah, I I guess that's that's the thing for me is the Eagles could be this crazy dominant all time team. Like they blew out their two playoff games, although. You know, the Niners couldn't throw the ball at the end. The Giants were kind of overachieving on their season, but two blowout wins, they dominated the regular season when they had to, um, that I think we're going to find out. I, I think we could be sitting there in the second quarter like, damn, these Eagles were real, and it's 21-7, to and here we are. Uh, I think yeah, if, I the, hope not. if the Chiefs linger, uh, I think the more Mahomes becomes Mahomes, and – as that that Super Bowl target gets bigger and bigger, then it becomes more Mahomes and Hurts. And how could you, how could you pick against Mahomes as not shots fired to Hurts? Um, the longer it goes, so I don't know that that's where I don't I don't know the X's and O's well enough to see if uh, like you're saying, I, <laughs> if we see Mahomes sprinting back every play in the first quarter, I think for me that would be this. It, it's grease the poles. Well, one other thing I would say. Sure. I think there's a lot of pressure on Andy Reid to stay out of Andy Reid's way. Mm-hmm. What I mean by that is, as great a, co- a coach as he is, and he is a surefire Hall of Famer, there are times where he, in my opinion, he gets too cute. Yeah. And I think that with Mahomes battling the ankle that he is and going against the pass r- rush that he will, man, they, I said it already. They got to run the ball a bit. And we saw them have to do that against Jacksonville. You know, Chad Henney came in the game and he made some plays through the air, but for the most part, that was a 98 yard drive on the ground. And they showed they could do it. Yeah. Like if your offensive line is good enough, and if the Eagles, not that they have a weakness defensively, but we know they're better against the pass than they are against the run, then let's go for that. You know, you don't have to. It doesn't have to be Madden. You don't have to throw it 87% of the time. Yeah. So, and e- even some, that's some, something to watch some of his creative stuff, when it's brilliant, it's brilliant. But when you try to do a, a shovel pass or, or trick shovel yeah, pass on cute. first down and then it's second and 16, yeah, you're, you're putting yourself yeah. in a bad spot against a really good team. So, okay, I like that. Um, Chris Rose, Chris Rose rotation. Kike was this week. Baseball today, 
um, yep. with you and your, we'll call him your co-host. Um, and we'll see you for Super Bowl stuff Sunday night, right? Isn't that, that's the, the Chris Rose slot? Yes. So uh, I have the good fortune of, in my opinion, doing the best show of the year on NFL Network. It's for two hours and flip on over from Fox right to NFL Network after the game. Uh, we have the winners on our set. And part of the reason I say that it's like the best assignment because there's very few times when you work in um, in sports covering events that you get to see people's lives change right in front of your eyes. So one of it is when you're covering a championship whether it's a World Series, NBA Finals, Stanley Cup, World Cup, I don't care what it is, or in this case, the Super Bowl. Uh, it It's not about money, even though it is at the end. It really isn't for, for a few minutes. Like the confetti falls, you see these guys that have worked so hard since they were six years old or whatever, chasing a dream, and for the first time ever, they could be standing at the mountaintop. Right. Like it's pretty special to be around that. The only other times I could say that is, is when uh, guys get into the Hall of Fame. And I've had the good fortune of being around some guys when they found out they were getting into their sports immortality. Mm. And uh, it's really, really cool because you just, you're around them and you get kind of a peek behind the curtain of them realizing the emotions of how much it took, how many people it took to get to a certain plateau. So I can't wait for that. And, you know, pretty, pretty fortunate to be able to cover that. I mean, I mean, the the Hall of Fame is immortality. Is a Super Bowl win is also that's um yep. you know that that lives forever. Um, Chris Rose, third year doing this. You are the best. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. I get to my see pleasure. you soon. I just put that together. Um, I my know. God, I know. It might be fun. We're taking Southwest there, and so we have okay. 27 stops, but it should be fine, <laughs> right? It's like uh, it's like uh. It's like you know, a train charting. Your, it's like charting your course with an electric car. <laughs> you know, you have to stop in certain places. And <laughs> all of that. Well, don't worry. We should get there. Uh, yeah. The nuptials are Saturday at four local time. We should get there by March 13th yeah. or so. Yeah. Well, uh, I think there's going to be cameras and stuff so we can replay it when when you show up. There. Oh, great. So Good. thank you yeah. at Chris Rose. The best ever.